Tordo Boho Sondo Yardo Kosoto. Oh Jesus, he are the Boho Sondo Yardo Tea Katai. He and I are the Tosondo Yardo Tosondo. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord, he condo the Yardo Boho Toy Sate. Oh Father, we come boldly in your presence, oh God, and we come thanking you in the name of Jesus. Rito Sondo, where you're at right now, would you just begin to tap into the flow of the Holy Ghost? Rito Sondo, Yardatea. Father, I thank you, oh Lord. I come, oh Lord, in your presence, oh God, to give you thanks. Rito Sondo, Irakete, Rito Sondo, oh Father, I give you utmost thanks. I worship you. I give you the praise that you deserve. Rito Sondo, Ikanda, why don't you thank him right now for thanks? into his presence Rito Father I thank you Father I lift up your name Father I thank you for everything you've done for my life Father I thank you oh God for everything you've done for me oh Lord Father I thank you for giving us the privilege to worship Rito Sondo Rito Sondo in the name of Jesus where you're at right now, would you just begin to thank God? Rito Sondo, for Lord, you inhabit the praises of your people. Rito Son, a Sunda. He condo le te ataya. He sonda, come on, somebody. Church already started. Church already started. It doesn't start when the music starts. It starts right now. When you get into the building, when you get into the flow of the Holy Ghost. Rito Sondoya. He condo where you're at right now. Would you begin to tap into the flow? Would you begin to tap into the presence of the Lord? Rito Sondo, yeah. Rito Sondo, Rito Sondo. Rito, oh God, hallelujah. Rito Sondo, in the name of Jesus. Rito Sondo, something just showed up in this building. Something just showed up in this place. And I'm persuaded that is an angelic host. I am persuaded that something just walked into the building right now. Right now where you're at, would you begin to entertain the presence of God? Rito Sondo, would you begin to lift up your hands? We're about to have a mighty move of God. Lift up your hands, everyone in this building, in the name of Jesus. Rito Sondo, I don't know why, but Brother Ted, right when you walked in, I felt like an angel walked in with you. Sister Marchi, go ahead and lift up your hands right now. Rito Sondo, 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 Rito Sond
on Pentecost Sunday. God, oh, breathe unto the believers. The start of the New Testament church. This day, about 2,000 years ago, in Jesus' name, Lord, we invite your presence into this place. Hallelujah, God. Thank you. 
promise to Abraham, O oh God. We claim the mighty outpouring. Somebody claim it with me right now. Somebody believe it with me right now. Lord, it's coming a day where millions and even billions of people will receive the Spirit of God. Come on, will you stretch your faith? Can you stretch your faith this morning? Millions of people will begin to receive the Spirit of God for He promised to Abraham all the families of the world of the earth will be blessed and He will pour out His Spirit upon all mankind. He would you pray in the spirit right now? Would you let God put words in your mouth? Would you let the spirit of God put words in your mouth this morning? As you begin, amen, to let it flow through you. An overflow, an overflowing of his spirit. He comes How does it overflow? It overflows with you. Speaking another language that you did not learn as a child. It overflows with you. Oh, as you open up your mouth. As you begin to put the voice, a sound to your praise. And begin to lose control of the muscle called your tongue. As you let God speak to you. As the body of Christ of the earth. Allowing relinquishing control to the head, even Christ speaking to you, life flowing to you, life through your tongue for life, and then is in the power of your tongue. So, Spirit, break out, Holy Spirit, break out. Would you lift up your voice? Oh, would you let your voice be heard? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. He Would you let your voice be heard on high? Would you let your voice be heard in heaven? Would you lift up your voice like a trumpet and bless the Lord? He bless the Lord. He can run the man and the Would you lift up your voice? He can run the Satan. Would you speak another language? Would you speak the language from heaven? The language of your father. He can. Just bask in the presence of the Lord this morning. Let the Spirit of God speak to you. Let the presence of God flow through you. Oh, be a conduit. Where the presence of God just flows. Relinquish control. Let it flow through you. You'll, in, you'll begin oh, to experience Him as He promised to be. He'll be your comforter when you need Him to be. Oh, He'll be your guide when you need Him to be a strong tower. When you need Him to be. Oh, He will be your Father. As you take your rightful place in Him, as the body of Christ, given power and authority in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. I know you, some of you got masks on, but would you shout? 
unto the Lord this morning. Would you lift up your voice like a trumpet? Would you shout unto the Lord this morning? A step unto God with a voice of triumph in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus.
It's not even a main ingredient. It's just a sign that follows the believers. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with you tongues. If you believe, you will speak in another language. That's what happens when you truly believe according to the scripture. It's not what you make up. It's not something your mind manufactures, but it's God flowing, overflowing through you. And here's the interpretation of that word in verse 18. They shall take up serpents. And if, and if you don't do it out of happenstance or intentionally, if, if it happens, if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. How many believe that? That God has promised a couple Sundays ago to the church that he's going to protect us. That is the interpretation of that time, one of the gifts of the Spirit. And if the virus for adventure comes to you, oh, you don't know, invite it. You're not being foolish. We're being wise. But if it happens, any deadly thing, it shall not. I said it shall not hurt you. Oh, the word of the Lord declares. Would you put praise in that word? Hallelujah, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. God is in this place. How many realize that? The Lord is in this house. Amen. We usually shake hands, but we'll forego that for now. Maybe you could just wave at somebody. Amen. And welcome them in the house of the Lord. Amen. It is definitely good to be in the house of God, how be it that it is different. Amen. But God is here. How many sense the presence of the Lord in this place? The presence of Jesus is in this house. I want to bless all of you. Amen. For being in the house of God. You may be seated. It's good to see all of you in the house of the Lord. We have missed you greatly. Amen. Over two months. Praise God. But I believe the Lord has ordained it that within those two, more than two months, that we have strengthened our walk with God. The purest form of walking with the Lord is you and God. Building that relationship. Amen. Praying. Seeking His face. Talking to Him and Him talking to you. In Jesus' name. I want to welcome the Aguilar family, Mag Magdalene. Magdalene and Esther. And the family, God bless you, and everybody get a senior in the house of God with two beautiful kids. Praise God. Hallelujah. Good to see also Beverly with our mongoose friend of Taco and First Ladies. God bless you, Beverly. Thank you for being in the house of God. Good to see Julie in the house of the Lord. Our grand show singer of the Lord connect you. Amen. And all of you fine folks, it is good to see you in the house of the Lord. Amen. I'm so thankful for our 24-hour prayer chain that you have uh, signed up every Wednesday. We are joined by hundreds, even thousands of people across the nation and across the world. There is a church that I've adopted every single day of the week. There's prayer going. Even right now. Because in other parts of the world, it's already Monday. Right. And some are going into just Sunday. And so since the beginning of May, the first day of May, there's been a church that I've adopted every single day. There's prayer every hour going on. Amen. You can see the reaction in the world. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> The spirits of darkness are reacting. Right. So don't be surprised what's going on. I know it's a tragedy what happened in Minneapolis. And, and we pray for the family that suffered loss. But the Bible foretells brother will rise up against brother. 
And so you're seeing that happening. It is a result because God has ordained the church, the body of Christ on the earth, to begin to wage spiritual warfare. Amen. And we as a church have adopted Wednesday, the whole day. Amen. And we are praying and we are seeing great things happening. People are receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost online. <laughs> Hallelujah. I think I know how many times I said Six. Amen. And people are getting healed yeah. online. Praise yeah. God. People are getting baptized <laughs> in swimming pools. Yeah. And so God, the gospel is not hindered whatsoever, but we are grateful for what the Lord is doing. Amen. Amen. I'm, we're going to take up our offering in a few minutes, and I thank you for giving online, stlh.org, and you, you've, paid, you've given to PayPal, and you've given through many avenues, Jesus' name, and, and I thank God that you've been doing that. <laughs> You know, I'm on Zoom meetings, and I'm, I'm Zoomed up. <laughs> so many Zoom meetings. And uh, I'm part of the uh, denominal churches here around Orange County. There's about 45 pastors that uh, meet and talk once a week. And, you know, they're, they're, we're praying for them because they're, they're suffering and going through things. And... Would you believe it if I tell you that through this, the giving at the lighthouse actually increased in Jesus' name? Amen. It has increased. I think we ought to thank God for that. Amen. Hallelujah. And some have to lay off their staff and what have you. And, and uh, God has been good to his people. Have you ever thought about your giving as a form of a weapon? Have you ever thought about that? Your tithe and your offering is a weapon against the enemy. You read Malachi, I don't know if uh, you ever catch that or stood up to you, that it says that he will rebuke the devourer for your sins. Amen? He will rebuke the devourer. God says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sins. Not, not angels, not you or I, but God himself rebukes the devourer for your sakes. And here's Psalms 41. And this is just an amazing promise. This is a song to the chief physician, the Psalm of David. Blessed is he that considereth the poor. When you give to the poor, the Lord will deliver you in time of trouble. Well, I thought you'd be excited about that. Since you are a great giving church, I think you ought to claim that this morning. That when you give, the Bible says, God sees it. And when you're in trouble, He'll deliver you. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Next verse. The Lord will preserve him. He gets better. The Lord will keep him and her, or her alive. You will be blessed upon the earth right here, right now. He won't deliver you to the will of your enemies. Oh, that will preach right there. Hallelujah. When you consider the poor next verse. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. What in the world is languishing? Though the Hebrew word is so rich, it applies to you when you're down. When you're depressed, when you're bedridden, God will strengthen you all because you considered the poor. Amen. And he will make him, your, he, and God will make all his bed in his sickness. He will deliver you out of that bed when you're bedridden, when you don't have strength. How many of you have been there? You were so sick, you had to stay in the bed. And when that happens, do you recall, amen, Psalms 41, because you consider the poor God will deliver you. Amen. Would you stand with me this morning in Jesus' name? 
and for hygiene purposes, you got nice baskets. And two would be good. <laughs> and brother, brother uh, Jim right there, would, uh, if you want to give electronically, uh, he, he'll, he'll help you. It's no different than you going to the grocery store. Amen. Only you know somebody. And, and you know he loves you. Doesn't want anything bad happen to you. Amen. Would you come, Sister Chica? I want you to pray for the congregation in Jesus' name for the offering. In Jesus' name. Lord, in the name of Jesus, O God, bless your people, O God, all the faithful tithers, O God. Lord, our givers, O God, and to you, Lord, I pray your blessing over them, your covering, O God, and your promise of Malachi, Lord, O God, that you will rebuke the devour off of them. I pray your blessings, O God. In Jesus' name, it's kind and in everything, Lord. In Jesus' name.
kind of accentuates what this is all about, being led by the Spirit of God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. People look for certainty. And they don't just look for a church that just will tell you whatever you want to hear. They're looking for a church that will preach truth to them. And I believe that we are a church that not only has the Word, but also the Spirit. But the Spirit is the transforming power that enables us to rise out of darkness into light. To rise from slavery into freedom. To rise from a place of growth and struggle and move into a land of promise and blessing. If we want to make it through troublesome times, if we want to come out of bondage and oppression, whether spiritual or even physical, and if we want to come out of growth and struggle into the blessings of God, then we must be led by the Holy Spirit. Would you lift up your hands and would you pray that you and I will be led by the Spirit of God and that you and I, amen, would be the body of Christ on the earth that as He leads us, that God would use us mightily in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It is Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost Sunday. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. What happened? On the day of Pentecost. All the believers. Were meeting together in one place. Just like we are right now. All believers. Meeting together in one place. Suddenly there was a sound. Someone say a sound. From heaven like a roaring of a mighty windstorm. And it filled the house. Where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames. Or tongues of fire. Appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present. So it's everyone. everyone. Everyone present. So you've got to be present. Amen. 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 I mean, we do like the, these raffle, you know, you've got to be present to get your gift. Right. right? Everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit. What happened when they were filled with the Holy Spirit? They began to speak. They began speaking in other languages. As the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. Amen. This is available for everybody today. Definitely it's available on the day of Pentecost. Especially today. Pentecost Sunday. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Pentecost Sunday. This gift is free on Pentecost. Hallelujah. This gift, you don't have to be good enough. Come on, somebody. You don't have to be good enough. You don't have to have your life in order. You don't have to be holy even. All you got to do is repent of your sins and line up with the Word of God. And God gives you this gift. It's a gift. If you have to work for it, it's not a gift anymore. It's a payment or a wage. But this is a gift. Pentecost is the birthday of the church. As far as we know, this is the actual Pentecost Sunday because of the Jews celebrating Passover. Did you know our calendar, the Roman calendar that uh, most of the world follows, uh, uh, it has been changed so often we don't even really know what year it is. I know it says year 2020, but who knows what year it is. Right. I do know it's not 2,000 years after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's not 2,000 years yet, because if it has been, we won't be here. God willing, all of us will be caught up in the air. All of us will be raptured out of here, delivered from this world. I don't know about you. I don't want to stay one day longer than I need to be according to the will of God in this world. I don't want to be with Jesus in heaven. I want to be caught up with him along with other believers in the air. And so the Jews did celebrate Passover. 
which is when Jesus was actually crucified. Amen. And so after Passover, 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus Christ is what it's called, called Pentecost or the Feast of Weeks. It is seven weeks after Passover, amen, that God poured out His Spirit on all that were gathered together in that upper room almost 2,000 years ago. It is 50. Pente is Greek for 50. And, and Christ, in 1 Corinthians 5, 7, even Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Right. And so when you begin to repent of your sins, and, and if you've been baptized in Jesus' name, and you have been chosen to be filled by the Spirit of God, Jesus is your sacrificial lamb. Yeah. Jesus is your Passover lamb. Hallelujah. Amen. 50 days after his resurrection, 40 days he was with people. 40 days he was alive. He was seen by many. Amen. That he indeed is alive. He took many different forms. He looked different in some cases. Amen. Lining up with the angel of the Lord in the Old Testament. If you read it. What, what they call the angel of the Lord in the Old Testament. That is a manifestation of God himself. A theophany of Jesus Christ. God manifests in flesh. And so we got to ask this question. What happened on the day of Pentecost? What did they preach? And how did people react? There were about 150 people that were not afraid. Amen. I want you to journey back with me of what was the surrounding condition of the believers on that day. Right. I know we got a virus, and I thank God that, that you're not afraid. Amen? Right. You can't, you know, you, you can't see this virus. You really can't. And so, if you can't see it, your only defense is the spirit of the Lord. I know you got masks on. And, and I, I wear them too. Uh, not often. I got a different mask. My mask covering my eyes. And, and, and I know some, it's, it's been a symbol of, you know, freedom or what have you. And we're not going to get involved with that. It, 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 you know, it's, it's, we, we want to exercise wisdom. Jesus name but we're not going to be afraid either mm -mm. but during their day the Roman church excuse me the Roman Empire along with the Jewish leaders were killing Christians wholesale they were not afraid of the virus their enemy was something that's seen and can be seen and can be touched and out of 15,000 at one time, not counting men, women, and children, that Jesus uh, uh, had followers and fed them, uh, when it came down to the promise of God, a hundred, about 120 people were there. They were not afraid. They gathered together in the upper room on the day of Pentecost, and God supernaturally filled them with His Spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus Christ has become the, their Passover. Jesus Christ has become the land slain from the foundation of the world for them. Amen. So what does this all mean? This is a, a Jewish holiday, Pentecost. It's a, it's a feast of weeks. And then 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus Christ in Leviticus 25, verse 8 to 10, it mirrors what is happening or the meaning now in spiritual sense what Pentecost means to us. Because right. back then they would take the sheaves and they would wave it as, 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 as a sign of thanking God for providing for them mm -hmm. or giving them liberty and freedom. Amen. At least from, from physical needs such as eating. Mm -hmm. Anybody overcome the habit of eating yet? 
or did you put on more pounds with this lockdown? I know you don't want to raise your hand, but, but I think we all did. I've cooked more and eaten more in the last two plus months than I've had in a long time. But this is in a spiritual sense. In, in verse 8, Leviticus 25, in addition, you must count off seven Sabbath years, seven sets of seven years, adding up to 49 years in all. And then the 50th year, then on the Day of Atonement, in the 50th year, you blow the ram's horn loud and long throughout the land. Hallelujah. Do you see any significance there? That in the 50th year, what they do, it's the Day of Atonement where everything is forgiven. And everything is returned back. If you own a debt that year, you don't owe it anymore. Could you imagine your bank calling you? You don't owe a mortgage anymore. You own your house. That's what they did. It was a year of jubilee, not a day of jubilee. A year of jubilee. The slaves were free. Everything that was owed in the bank was forgiven. And then the ram's horn was blown loud and long in the earth. The next great event that this world is going to experience is the trumpet of God will begin to sound. For the trumpet of God will sound. And they that are alive and they that remain in Him, having a relationship with God, filled with His Spirit, baptized in His name, will be caught up together in the earth. Verse 10 said, this year part us holy, a time to proclaim freedom throughout the land. It was a year of jubilee. It was freedom. Everything was forgiven. This happened to Israel. All eyes, at least the Christian world, looked at them. It was, they, they were in uh, uh, 1998. So in 1948, after World War II, when they actually were a land, uh, a nation again, and 50 years later, all eyes were looking at them to see if they would actually practice uh, Jubilee, the year of Jubilee. They did not. But you and I, as spiritual children, because this applies to us, on the day of Pentecost, there's freedom. Freedom from sin. Hallelujah. Freedom from the bondage of this world and the weights and the worries of the world. That you can continually cast your ears upon the world. It will be a year of jubilee for you when each of you may return to the land that belonged to your ancestors and return to your own clan. It's not a coincidence that the Spirit of God was poured out on the day of Pentecost, on the year of Jubilee. What happened on the day of Pentecost? Is it for us today? Believers spoke in tongues. Another language as a sign that the Holy Spirit has filled their body, which is the temple of the Holy, God, Holy Ghost, and it overflows. Acts 2 verse 4, and everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, how can you know somebody's filled with something that you can't see? Right? With the Spirit of God, you can't see it. It's air, pneuma. You can't see the air. You can hear the effects or feel the effects. I hope you can feel the air. I don't know if it's colder there or not, but we have, by intention, we're, we're having an airflow here. <laughs> All the fans are going. The one that turns. <laughs> and, and we got some airflow. But, but spirit is pneuma or air or holy air. Right. And you can't see air. You could feel it, and you could hear the air. The only way they knew that they were filled with the Holy Spirit is they began speaking other languages that they did not make up, but God supernaturally began to speak to them. It was understood by the people that were there on that day from all the regions of Galilee and all the proselytes from other nations. They said, we do hear them speak in our own language. And this is what they heard. They heard them speak the praises of God. I want you to realize, when you begin to speak in tongues, you're not just speaking something you cannot understand. But in the spirit, God understands it. And if somebody speaks the language, they will understand it. And you're speaking the praises of 
Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That is for us today. I said that is for us today. When the Holy Spirit comes inside of you, you will speak another language. Praise God. It was for everyone present on that day, about 120 of them. Jesus said this was going to happen. That there will be a sound when the Spirit of God overflows from the inside. John 3 verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, to Nicodemus, Verily, verily, I say unto you, or the except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. What's the kingdom of God? The king has a kingdom, right? You can't be called a king if you don't have a kingdom. Mm -hmm. Right? right. Kind of like you can't be called a father if you don't have any kids. Right. Or a pilot if you don't fly any plane. Right. Or a driver without a license or not driving a car. Right. Amen? So God's kingdom is heaven. Can we agree on that? Sure. You can't see heaven. If you're not born again. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? And he entered the second time that his mother's womb and be born. He's talking, speaking, thinking in the carnal mind. And the carnal mind is an enemy, enemy of God. Right. It, it cannot understand the spirit. It cannot understand spiritual principles. You cannot uh, look at this uh, and dissect it with your intellect. Uh, this, is, this is understood by the Spirit of God. Uh, this is a spiritual application uh, that needs to be obeyed. Uh, Jesus answered him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man, he adds more detail, be born of war. Amen? Some would just explain it away. Well, water is, you know, the plasma when you're born. Really? Where does that say that in the Bible? Well, it's not there. Aren't you? We're just kind of making that up. And really, that's what most people do. Can't make this up. Water is water. Man, there's no hidden meaning there. It's water. You could bottle it up. Or you could put it in a coffin right there called the baptistry behind it. It is a coffin. Because that's where you bury people. Mm -hmm. And they die to their old life. Yeah. Right. Born again of water and the spirit. He cannot enter into heaven. Can't enter the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. It's not the plasma of your mom. But that's flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Don't be amazed or marvel now that I said that to thee. You must be born again. It is a must. It is a, it is a requirement. And here's where the sound that came from huh, on the day of Pentecost. He says the wind blows where it wants to or where this thing. This is King James Version. And now here is the sound thereof. You can't tell where it's coming because the wind or where it's going because it's invisible. And so is everyone, not some, everyone that's born of the Spirit, there's a sound right. of the wind Amen. affecting their soul, their yeah. body. Yeah. And you, when you read the book of Acts, what is that sound? It is the sound of, of another language, supernaturally God, giving you that ability to speak in the name of the Lord Jesus when it overflows in your soul. It's not enough that it's just dormant in you. It's got to overflow. I said it has to overflow. How does it overflow when you speak supernaturally and in a language you did not know as a child? All of the believers, about 120 of them, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, amen, began to speak in other tongues on the day of Pentecost. Amen. And you're going to ask, is this promise for us today? And if it is, do you want it? Right. And do you believe it? Amen. Because this gift, and it is a gift, you don't have to work for it. You just got to come and opens your, your, your soul and God through your hunger and your faith will fill you with that gift. Amen. You have to open your soul, right? You can't receive a gift with a closed hand. Right. Right. 
Have you ever tried it? No. You gotta open your hand. Yes. You can't receive the gift with a closed mouth. You gotta open your mouth. Because it comes through speaking. Life in death is in the power of your tongue, the Bible says. Mm -hmm. And when you begin to open your mouth when the heart confession is made, amen, and with your mouth, whatever's in your heart, it's beginning to be expressed in your mouth. And when there's gratitude there and love and praise to Jesus Christ, it's just a natural flow. It's going to come out. You're just going to say, hallelujah, Lord. God, thank you. Lord Jesus, I bless you. Speaking of the language as a sign that sound, so is everyone that's born of the spirit. There is a sound. Hallelujah. What else happened on the day of Pentecost? Remember, it's the feast of Pentecost that coincided with the day of atonement. Atoning for their sins, the forgiveness of sins. Amen. What does that have to do with us today? The forgiveness of sins. When does that happen? To the New Testament believer. Because we don't have animal sacrifices anymore. Mm -mm. Thank God. Mm -hmm. Right? Thank God. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. You could come, you could repent, yeah. and God could forgive you, and nobody right. knowing that you've right. sinned. Right, right, right. Amen. Hello? Yes. In the Old Testament, that was not possible. Right. Many of us would be bringing an ox. Right. That's proportionate to your sin. Right. Maybe some an elephant. <laughs> I know they didn't sacrifice elephants. <laughs> but here you are. Here you and I, we're so privileged. Aren't you thankful to God? Aren't you thankful to Jesus? He is the Lamb of Passover. He is sacrificed slain right. from the foundation of the world. Before the infilling of the Holy Ghost, remember he hid. Right. 
He said, aren't you one of them? Your speech betrays you. And then, no, I, I don't know him. He denied Christ. He cursed three times. Mm -hmm. Denying Jesus Christ. Right. And there's a lesson to that. That Judas did the same. When we really study it out, Judas and Peter committed the same sin right. of denying Christ. But one was able to forgive himself and preach on the day of Pentecost. And the other condemned himself and hanged himself. I want to tell you, whatever or wherever you're at in your walk with God, however low you've sunk, there's always hope. While there's life, there is hope for you. Don't let your mind, don't let the devil tell you there's no hope. Because why? And so Peter began to preach with boldness now. Because in Acts 2 and 1, he was filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And they were accused of being drunk. Anyone been drunk before? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know how it is to be drunk, right? Now, I'm not talking about no social drinking, you know, with your pinky out. I'm talking about just flat out, slush, drunk. And you don't know what happened last night. No. When you're drunk, you lose control right. of your motor skill. Right, right. You lose control of your tongue. Right. You say things that you would not say when you're sober. Right. You get a little bit bold when you're drunk. Right. Oh, come on now, don't let right. so sanctified. Right. You know right. what I'm about. Right. And it's the same analogy when the Holy Ghost comes on you. Right. The Holy Spirit. Amen. You're going to begin to speak. Yes, You're going to begin to lose control. Yes. Amen. Of your motor skills. If you allow it, God is gentle. He won't force you if you don't want it. But why wouldn't you want it? It's for you. It's a gift. Hallelujah. You're going to speak in other language. In Jesus' name. Peter said we are not drunk as you think we are, but we are filled with his spirit. And he began to preach Jesus unto them, that they crucified Christ, that they were guilty and they needed a savior. Hallelujah. Can I tell you this morning that all of us need a savior. Even if you're living a holy, separated life, which is what we teach, we all need a savior. You can never be good enough to think you're going to save yourself out of your own works. You and I need a Savior. If you've lived any length of time for the Lord, you can quickly realize you need a Savior. Turn to somebody and tell them you need a Savior. And the good news is Jesus is in the house. Amen. We cannot save ourselves. We're all guilty of crucifying Jesus Christ. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. He come to the Lord of us. All have sinned. The Romans free in Jesus' name and come short of the glory of God. There's, there's no exception. All have sinned. Right. You've come short. Right. You and I. Of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. We need to say it. So Peter preached long and hard. Right. Remember there was a feast. And so everybody came to this feast from all around the surrounding cities and nations. People that spoke different languages. Have you ever been to that? You know, I, don't know if we, we, I guess the, the closest here would be the Orange County Fairgrounds that I think they're canceling. Mm -hmm. um, there was a, I know this is kind of trivial, but it's funny. Brother Mallory Prostead said, I didn't know the cure for the virus is actually riots. Because <laughs> they don't seem to wear masks or practice social distancing, mm -hmm. and they seem to be fine. And I know that, that that cause now is being hijacked by these different groups, and we need to pray for our nation. Hallelujah! There will be a great awakening. Everything is being shaken. Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. for a purpose. Right. Hallelujah. Right. Amen. And so these people are gathered in this place. And Peter began to preach that they're guilty in Acts 2 37. That Peter's words pierced their hearts. Right. Conviction began to set in. Yeah. Now, if you think you're fine and you don't need a Savior, mm. you're not going to get the Holy Right. But if you humble yourself and say, God, I'm going to be honest with myself, I need a Savior. Lord, I've lived long enough to realize that this flesh is not my ally. It's working against me. And I've got to bring it under control. Peter's words pierced our hearts. They said unto him and to the other apostles, Brothers, uh, what should we do? Not what should we say. What should we do? It's obedience. Some say it's obedience. It's not thinking. It, it, our, our culture today it is different. When we think it, we there, there's we, in our culture it says we we obeyed it if we if we said it if we thought it. In that day, obedience is closely linked to doing something about it, not just thinking about it or speaking about it. Right. Amen. Right. And that's what they teach in the university. They profess things, but they don't do it. It's different in this culture. So he said, what must we do? Peter replied, each of you must repent of your sins. So you got to repent. What does repentance mean? You turn away from your sins. You confess with your mouth, God, I need a Savior. I'm a sinner, Lord. I come short of the glory of God. You turn to God. You change direction. And be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Right. There's nobody baptized in the Bible other than in Jesus' name. Right. Nobody. Nobody. If you find one person, I'll give you $100,000. Or maybe not. I'll give you $1,000 that I got last time. <laughs> All right, so yeah, let's, let's bring it up. $100,000 because it's not there. No, not one person was baptized in the name of the Father's of the Holy Ghost. It's not there. Because the name of the Father is who? Jesus. Jesus said, I come in my Father's name. Right, right, right. Right? The name of Jesus is who? Jesus, right? That was not a trick question. <laughs> the name of the Holy Ghost is who? Jesus. Jesus said, I will send the Comforter in my name. In his name, in Jesus' name. And so name, the yeah. apostles understood when Jesus gave them a command to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Uh, they obeyed it here. They were baptized in Acts 2.38 in Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because the power is in the name, not the position or title. The bank could care less that the, the general manager of the universe. By the way, if you are, you should resign that position. That's too stressful. They could care less. They want to know the name on your signature on your check. That's what gives it authority and power. The power is in the name. Because he has been given a name above all names. And that's the name of Jesus. Every knee will bow. And every tongue will confess to the glory of God the Father. He said, whatever you do in word or in deed, do it all in the name of Jesus. Giving thanks to God by him. And so they baptized in Jesus' name. What's the reason? For the forgiveness of sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So you got to repent. You got to be baptized in Jesus' name. That's born of water. That's what he told me to do. And of the Spirit. That's being filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. In verse 39, is it for us today? This promise is to you. Some say it's for me. For me. Your children, the next generation. Right. And even to the Gentiles, all have been called by the Lord the succeeding generations. Then Peter continued preaching for a long time. Right. Strongly urging them, all the listeners, save yourselves from this crooked generation. Right. Was he talking about salvation? You better believe it. Right. It's right there. 
Don't worry, I'm not going to preach for a long time. I thought you'd rejoice today. Thank you, Lord. I'm not going to preach for a long time. Well, long is all, you know, relevant. It right? might be long to you. It might be short for me. Don't worry, you're sitting down. I'm standing up. Praise <laughs> God. He continued preaching. He said, save yourselves. How do you save yourself? By repenting. By being baptized in Jesus' name. By being filled with the Holy Ghost. And those who believe what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day about 3,000 in all. Would you believe with me this morning? Amen. Yes. There will come a day right here all over South Orange County, all over the nation, even people by the droves, by the thousand. Amen. will receive this revelation that God, Jesus Christ, is his name. And they will get rebaptized in the name. And they will be filled with his Holy Spirit. Because the Lord promised to Abraham from your seed, even the spiritual seed, all the nations, all the families will be blessed. And this gospel will be preached to everyone. And Jesus will come. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. That's why as, as we grow, I, I want you to see yourself as a minister of God. Yes. Because yes. I'm not going to baptize 3,000 people by myself. Forget right. that. Right. That's not happening. Yeah. Could you imagine? That's why, you know, they used to, actually, in the Catholic Church, used to baptize by immersion in Jesus' name. But when they came by the thousands, they changed it in, in the third century. Even their own encyclopedia records that they baptized in Jesus' name and in worship. Mm -hmm. But because now of tradition, they kind of just, you know, sprinkle your head with water. Then you bury. Have you ever buried somebody? You don't sprinkle dirt. Right. right? You won't pay the mortuary good money for that. Anybody can do that. You go down into the water we drink. Right. That's what they did in the Bible. Amen. And those that believe were about 3,000. The word of God requires a response. Amen. It's looking for those that would believe it and act on what they hear. Faith comes by hearing. Right. Hearing by the word of God. They repented of their sins when they were baptized in Jesus' name. That's their day of atonement. Their sins are washed. Their sins are forgiven. Do you remember the time when you were baptized in Jesus' name? When you came out of the water, you felt different, didn't you? When you felt light in your spirit, it was just not water, you see. It was the word, the name pronounced over you. to that day and then you have the privilege of repentance moving forward living with God in Jesus Amen. hallelujah hallelujah in Jesus hallelujah. we're going to repent together yeah. we're going to repent together we're going to prepare and we're going to believe this together what they did on the day of Pentecost we're going to do it together Amen. there's water if you have not been baptized in Jesus' name, you need to be baptized in Jesus' name today. Amen. Today. If you can repent of your sins, you are old enough to be baptized in Jesus' name. If you can't repent of your sins or you're too young, then you wait. But if you're old enough to repent, you realize that you're sinful. You can't be baptized in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. What do we need to repent for? You repent of your thoughts. You repent of your words. And you repent of your actions. Right. That's all of your life. Your words, your thoughts, your actions. Where you're sitting right now, would you begin to repent? Would you ask God to wash you, to forgive you of every sin that you've ever committed? God, forgive me, Lord, of thoughts that I've thought about that I should not. In Jesus' name, come on somebody, would you begin to repent? Would you express it with words coming out of your mouth? Father, forgive me of thoughts 
that are not pleasing to you. Lustful thoughts, thoughts of murder, thoughts of stealing of God, thoughts of revenge, oh Lord, thoughts of anger. Father, forgive me in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, forgive me of what I said, oh Lord. Words, oh God, that have left my mouth. Words spoken, oh God, even in jest or in anger, oh Lord. And God, forgive me of the things I've done or the things that I have not done that I should have done in Jesus' name. And after repenting, you need to be baptized in Jesus' name. Acts 1 and 8, but you will receive power. Why do you want the Holy Ghost? Because it's power. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you to be witnesses about Jesus Christ. Power. Dunamis power that displaces things in your life. How do you receive the Holy Ghost? This power? You begin to thank God. You begin to praise God. You thank God for the promise of the Holy Ghost. When you're seeking for the Holy Ghost, you don't beg Him for it. You simply thank God for it. Lord, thank you for filling me with your Holy Spirit because it is your promise. Hallelujah. Thank you, O oh God. I believe it, Lord, that I will speak another language today just like they did on the day of Pentecost almost 2,000 years ago in Jesus' name. And as you begin to express that word of thanks, some of you, it's easier to just say hallelujah. Hallelujah means God, I give you my all. I give you my highest praise. And remember, you can't speak in another language in English at the same time. And so at some point of giving God thanks, you don't control or you don't pronounce the words. You don't pronounce hallelujah. You keep saying it. It's your own voice. Amen. But you just allow God to flow through you, overflow through you, and you will speak another language. Amen. And if you have not been baptized in Jesus' name, we are ready to baptize you. If you're not sure how you were baptized, if you are not sure, don't leave it to chance. Don't be held back by tradition. Well, I think I was. No, there's no think here. You've got to be sure. You've got to make your election and your calling sure. All you got to do is decide. Lord, I want to be baptized in your name today in Jesus' name. Mark 16, 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. That's how important it is. Baptism is more than just a confession of your faith. Of a clear, clear conscience to God. But baptism now saves us. It saves us. He said, he that believeth and is baptized, there's a conjunction, shall be saved. It requires two elements, believing and acting on your faith and being baptized. The result is salvation. Don't read it. He that believeth is saved. And if I want to be baptized, I can. It doesn't read that way. Right. Amen. You have to believe. Believe what? What Peter preached on the day of Pentecost. Right. To repent and be baptized in Jesus' name, then you will be saved. He that believeth not and is not baptized, you can add that, because that is what the premise is. There's a semicolon there. You see the semicolon after saved. That means the subject is before that. It's talking about believing in baptism. But he that believeth not shall be damned. You have to be baptized in Jesus. He said that these signs shall follow that we talked about. It. And when God begins to fill you with his spirit, he will lead you into all truth. John 16, verse 12 to 13. There is so much more I want to tell you, but you can't bear it now. But when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. John 16, 12, please. He will guide you into all truth. Hallelujah. If you have the Holy Ghost, 
And what you're feeling right now is that presence of God urging you to take a step of faith. To be baptized in Jesus' name. Verse 13, he will lead you into all truth. Would you stand with me this morning? Those of you that want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want you to come to the front. If you've not been filled with the Holy Spirit, come to the front. We're going to pray. We're going to believe in Jesus' name that he fills you with his spirit. If you've not been baptized in Jesus' name, tell someone beside you, we'll baptize you today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Joel prophesied that in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh or upon every person. This promise is for you. Hallelujah. How do you get filled with the Holy Spirit? You thank God. You worship God. You thank Him for every good thing that had ever happened in your life. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. And at some point, don't pronounce hallelujah. But let the Holy Spirit give you words to speak. Let it flow out of you in the name of of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you have not been baptized yet in Jesus' name, it is very important to be rebaptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Would you lift up your hands right now? And if somebody beside you doesn't have the Holy Spirit yet, or you know they're not, or if you want to be refilled with the Holy Spirit to be to the point of overflowing. Would you begin to lift up your voice? Would you begin to thank God? Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you, O God. Go ahead and begin to thank the Lord. Go ahead, say hallelujah. Worship God. Let your tongue pray for somebody beside you and begin to pray for them that God will fill them with the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Can you stretch forth your right hand? We're going to pray for Beverly in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, for the divine touch of healing, God, we pray right now 
even for the infilling of the Holy Spirit, they begin to speak another language. Go ahead, Beverly. Go ahead. They begin to say hallelujah. God will fill you with the Holy Ghost. God will fill you with the Holy Ghost. Father, I release your spirit, O oh God, upon my dear sister, O oh Lord. I release this gift that you promised to everyone in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody release your faith collectively right now. Oh, for this right. precious lady to be born of water and of the Spirit. Along with healing, oh God, the gift that you promised in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let's worship God. 